Just do another one. That was brilliant. What comes after that? Uh, I do was, I just no, say? No, just say that same thing and then the little music will play. Go ahead, sorry. Happy Independence Day or, what, or Happy Fourth of July? Which one would you say? I just wouldn't, whenever I say it, I would mean it. Okay. I, I wouldn't do this what oh, you just did. Dude. Uh, happy yeah. Independence, everybody. Ho ho. Happy birthday, America. <laughs> Welcome to Throw It Out. No. Yes. <laughs> Keep it. <laughs>All right, another week, another workout. This is where we invite all of you to do a workout with our training think tank community. Again, we're trying to help prep you guys for online style qualifier workouts. So our on-site training group does the workout a week ahead of you guys. We give you some tips, we give you some strategy, we give you some scores. Let's go out onto the floor and Brandon will announce the workout. All right, today's workout is three separate scored events and it's in three different AMRAP settings. So the first one's gonna be a three minute AMRAP. You'll rest three minutes, six minute AMRAP, rest three minutes, nine minute AMRAP. The workout is the exact same, and you will start back at the top for each AMRAP. So here's what it looks like. 20 hang power snatch, 115, 80. 10 burpee box jumps. 20 thrusters, same load. 10 burpee box jumps. 20 hang power cleans. 10 burpee box jumps. 20 overhead squats. 10 burpee box jumps. And then 20 ring muscle ups. So let's say in the first three minutes, you get to finish the 20 thrusters. You'll rest your three minutes. Then you will start back at the 20 hang power snatches for the next six minute AMRAP and then you'll rest three minutes, start back at the top again for the last nine minute AMRAP. Any questions on that? How it works? No? If you finish in three minutes, are you done? If you finish in three minutes, that's your score, and then you do it again in the six minutes, so then you get two rounds, and then you get three rounds in the nine minute AMRAP. Yeah. Your, it's, these are three separate scores, so you can get as far as you want in the first three minutes, whatever, and then it's a new score for the six minutes, and then it's a new score for the nine minute AMRAP. So this workout's gonna be pretty nasty. You're yelling. Yep. So this workout's gonna be pretty nasty. There's three parts, and I think the keys to success are going to be in what we're calling priority focus. And the priority focus, we broke into two major things. The first is workout selection, and the second is movement speed. So you yeah. wanna just jump in for yeah, workout so selection? The, the first thing we gotta think about is what's the setting for the, these three AMRAPs? So the way that we kind of describe this is if it's at a sanctional event where first place is 100 points, and then it goes down from there yeah. to last place is zero points, then you're gonna wanna attack these AMRAPs in a different way than if it was like an online qualifier setting where first place is just one point, and then if you get a bad score, it could be 200th place, yeah. right? That could really kick you out. Yeah, and the other thing too about an in-person event is that you're managing your energy relative to the rest of the people in the field and you're all doing it together at the same time. Right. Whereas in a qualifier setting, which is what we're trying to practice, you can get the scores ahead of time, you can do some pacing and strategy to try to figure out what makes sense for your engine and how you're going to race that specific group of three workouts. Right, so we're gonna focus on the qualifier side of things, but just in case you guys kind of start thinking about this moving forward. If you're at a sanctional, there may be other ways to pace this. It may be, I wanna go really hard on the three minute AMRAP and try to get a first or second place, get 100 points on the board. Slow down in the six minute AMRAP, try to get like a 15th to 20th if you know, like if you're competing with 40 people, you know where you're at there. Yeah. And then on the last one, you just gotta sell out and try to get another first place because two 100 point scores are always gonna be better than just kind of having the aggregate of like 15th place yeah. in, in the sanctional setting. Yeah. But with the qualifier setting, how would you say that you should attack these? Yeah, I mean, I. Th Think in a qualifier setting because there's generally a, a ton of people on a leaderboard. Even in a smaller sanctional, you're still going to have a pretty depth a pretty deep pool of athletes competing, you probably should be trying to manage your energy so you're getting the maximum output over the course of three workouts, as opposed to thinking like, I'm gonna game this, I'm gonna go max effort in the third, and in the three minute one and try to get a win, and then you know pace the six minute one and then go max effort in the nine. That six minute AMRAP, if you tried to throttle back, is gonna be way too costly on a leaderboard. Yep. So I think you need to figure out how you're going to focus your energy over the course of the three, six, and nine minutes to have an aggregate high level performance. So yeah. it's not like, hey, go max effort in the three minutes, but think of it as a three minute go without a sprint finish kick or something like that. Right. Something that allows you to put your focus on and distribute it over the three workouts evenly as opposed to what most, most people do when there's multi scores in an event is try to game it and pick one or two yeah. as a priority. Uh, you could kind of liken this to like an 18-2 where there's two scores in the Metcon was before the, the heavy yeah. clean. Some people try to game the first part too much and then they got like a 300th place and they're like, I'm out of regionals now. Yeah. So you still have to go pretty hot in the first one, but you don't want to spill over to where 
you miss, you know, like a heavy clean at the end yeah. in that style of a workout. Yeah, so distribute, I guess the, the key would be distribute your energy over the course of those three workouts as evenly as you possibly can. Right, and then you do want to spill over in the, in the nine minute, the last minute yeah. or two, and not obviously to the point you can't do anything, but that's where you kind of get that kick at the end. For sure. The last one is movement speed. So now we're talking about in the actual workout, you've got to kind of prioritize which movements you're going to attack and which ones you're going to kind of slow down on. Yeah. Yeah, and it, each one of the intervals is the same workout. Right. I mean, you're just getting deeper into that workout as you're going from the three to the six to the nine, but the movements are completely different. So it's basically the way that I think about it is barbell cycling as one portion of the workout and then body weight conditioning with the burpee box jump over. So I think of it as there are kind of two ways to attack it. One is where you take big, fast, explosive, unbroken sets of the barbell work, and think of that burpee box jump as almost a transitional rest period, or where you can take advantage of the fact that you move your body really well and can stay under control or under your threshold, you attack the burpee box jump over and get through those 10 reps pretty quickly, and th think about that barbell cycling as do them fast, but take extra breaks, drop the barbell more frequently, and have kind of more of a linear output on that, right? Yeah, we're gonna see both in the demo, and this is a long one, so we're gonna give you more tips as we kind of go through the demo. So this will be Travis and Noah. Have fun watching it, guys. And we have begun. First one's a three minute AMRAP, the rest three minutes, six minute AMRAP, rest three minutes. Yeah, they heard it, they heard it. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. What do you think about Just the, uh, people know. the snatch technique? Like you could see Colson in the back doing the thigh bounce and Trav's kind of going down from the hang. Yeah, this is actually something that I started to integrate into people's designs is they do um, EMOMs or, or sets of kind of like non-fatigued like hang snatches or hang kettlebell snatches or whatever it is that you need to work on and work on the movement speed and efficiency of it. So obviously you know, like Travis and Noah both hang and they're not really bouncing. They can bounce, but they find that that's the most efficient use of their energy. Um, but I tell people like, hey, find that in these EMOMs and then figure out what you want to use in workouts. And I think bouncing obviously is a little bit faster. Yeah. Noah's strategy was to go unbroken on the 20 hang power snatch. He asked me ahead of time, he said, I think I'm just gonna go unbroken on the power snatch and thrusters. And I was like, all right, cool, let's see what happens. Trav, he put a break in. Um, I don't wanna spoil what happens because yeah, that's spoil. half the fun. Yeah. No spoiler alerts here. But they both had a plan going in of what, when they wanted to attack and then which AMRAP they wanted to get the best score on too. Yeah. Yeah, so I think Noah's burpee box jump speed is normally a, a little bit faster than Trav's if they're like fresh going in a max effort type workout. And you can see Trav here, he's got a couple, well, he's just finished up, but he's got a couple of those extra steps on the box. He's definitely not like, neither of them are really like dropping the hammer on those burpee box jump overs. Um, but their movement speed on the barbell stuff is pretty quick. Yeah. I think that's where um, we talked about a little bit in the beginning of the workout, kind of where your focus is gonna be. I think at an elite level, the energy expenditure or the amount of messed up -edness you're gonna get is definitely way higher if you try to go fast on 10 burpee box jump overs versus their barbell cycling is so efficient at this loading. Yeah. So they kind of just go quick with some quick breaks and then kind of smooth and steady on the burpees. And you'll, they'll notice, obviously, as we go through this video, uh, everyone's watching this, they'll pick up their pace on some things in the six minute and then on other things in the nine minute. So they're fit, you know, and they're both intuitive. Yeah. They listen to their bodies and kind of take breaks when they need to. Yeah. But um, that they pace the box jumps in this first one for sure to make sure that they could save some energy for the next yeah. camera. As, as you, you know, there's some, some really, really good athletes in this heat. Um, and you have kind of a backdrop as you're watching the athletes, you can see how different the movement speed is when they're cycling a barbell. Like Joey was in the back corner there and he was doing thrusters and Travis was going. You could just see like the deliberate pause overhead and how much that eats into time. And you're under tension that whole time when you, even if you're like, resting with the barbell overhead, you're still under tension. Yep. You're not really getting a rest break there. So as people get more developed with this, the, the faster they can get through the work with the barbell, I feel like the better. Oh, so we just finished up three minutes. Scores wise, they were um, in the... Noah did some hang power cleans. Yeah, and Travis, I think finished... Finishing up his burning yeah, box. Yeah, I think he finished nine finish. of them. You'll get the scores. We'll give you the scores when we're done with this demo. Um, yeah, I, actually, when I was watching this, I thought that 
everyone looked pretty good considering they went three minutes, quote unquote, max effort. I didn't think people were like super messed up. I thought it seemed like this first heat paced it pretty well. Yeah. And, you know, for those that are watching this right now, you got to keep in mind, this was at the end of a games prep camp. Yeah. So this was the last workout they did over the course of six days? Yeah, I mean, I think it, since we got the time, I could kind of just explain some of the stuff that we did. So Monday morning, we went mountain biking. We did, uh, it was like anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes, depending on the skill level of the person. We did a loop. We did that first one, like 90% effort, except for Luke P, who went at 175% <laughs> effort fell off and fell times. off the bike <laughs> eight times. <laughs> then, uh, then we did a second loop. Then after that, we came to the gym. We did uh, a clean and jerk, a snatch. We did some extra lifting. And I think we did a Metcon on that day. On Tuesday morning, we did a workout of the gym that was strongman focused. Then we went to the pool and did uh, two pool workouts, a, and then some backstroke drilling, and then came back to the gym and did another workout. Then Wednesday, we went to the field early and did some field sprint work and handstand walking, then went up and did a 13.7 mile bike and a four and a half mile run, then came into the evening and did a pretty nasty workout that had heavy DT and wall balls really and chest to bar pull-ups mixed in it. And then on Friday, we went up and we did a paddle workout and then a swim prone paddle swim workout. Um, then yesterday, the 70s workout. yeah, yesterday we did a workout that Still had, the same day as the yeah, paddle. yeah, yeah, same day as the paddle, uh, 70, 70, 70, 70 is some tough movements. And then a strength workout that followed that, that was a full 90 minute training session or maybe a little bit less. Some of those were early days, so you didn't get the best sleep. Yeah. yeah. And then we did this. So what you're seeing is first of all, just impressive the amount of work capacity that people have to be able to continue handling this volume and putting out intensity. But these athletes probably aren't in like peak qualifier style shape. These scores will still be It'll probably be really untouchable good. for most yeah, people. Yeah, I mean, some but. people could beat them on the three minute AMRAP. They yeah. both kind of paced it out to make sure that they could do well in the six and the nine. You'll see how far they get in the nine minutes. Yeah. Um, so it's a little bit different there. But I mean, they did 140 hinging pattern movements yesterday with the dumbbell snatch and it was a squat snatch too. So they squatted and then another 70 kettlebell snatches and now it's hang power snatches. So, you know, we're comboing some of these movements because the reality is that the games, you're, you're probably gonna see some combos from back to back days that you have to be, you, yeah. you have to have some resilience. Yeah, we'll come back to the games prep stuff since they yeah. just started up this six minute AMRAP. Um, Brooke is in the back left corner of the video and she just destroyed the barbell. Oh, she it looks was so good really, barbell. really impressive. Her first two workouts relative to the other females when we go over the scores were like off the charts. 20 good. plus reps, yeah. more. Um, that was really impressive. I think she actually beat the guys too. That yeah. We have them as the demo. Maybe we should have put her So in Yeah, <laughs> well, so this is a, one of the examples of it kind of picking your poison, so to speak. She went really fast in the barbell because she's just so good at it and then or, I mean, her burpee boxings were still faster than most people, but that was her break. She kind of thought about that and was talking about it beforehand. Like, I'm gonna just kind of step up each of these burpee box jumps, make sure I breathe on the box. But then as soon as I get back to the barbell, I'm gonna go fast. And on her hang movements especially, they were yeah, so, so fast. So I mean, she's fast. very, very impressive. Yeah, um, but that's what we had, that's one of the primary things with regards to excelling in a workout like this is like knowing your system and knowing how you want to race that system in a given workout. Now, you can't race your system to beat a games athlete if you're not a games athlete, haven't dedicated the time, don't have the genetics, don't have the skill level, but within your peer group, there's like a range of like, here's your potential and here's if you shit the bed in the workout, you come up with a game plan that allows you to get as close as possible to your potential, which you gotta take into consideration energy management from one workout to the next, movement speed on each one of the movements, what you're good at, what you're not good at, and I think that's the, that's one of the keys of this sport is figuring out how do you get a strange new workout that you've never seen with movements you might have practiced but not in the format that they're gonna yep. feel and how do you race in it and put out your best overall time or your best overall score if it's an AMRAP. And I think that's really the purpose of the throwdown is to just keep peop giving people different looks, scores to go after and just try to practice those things as much as possible. Yeah. I think a common theme for some that are trying to get better at the sport is they get scared of new styles of workouts, right? But what I try to remind my athletes is that 
the patterns don't really change. Like it may be a new squatting movement, but that knee flexion, ankle flexion, hip flexion pattern, the squatting pattern is always the same. So if you've trained that, then it may feel funny and you gotta kind of figure it out with maybe a dumbbell or a kettlebell versus a barbell. But you have the pattern endurance and the yeah. same thing with a hinge or whatever it may be. Yeah. So that's something to just kind of remind yourself as you learn all these new movements or new things get out, come out in the open or at a sanctional. Uh, you practice all those things. Now yeah. it's just getting the actual skill of whatever the barbell is or the kettlebell or the dumbbell. Yeah. yeah, and you don't really need to work on the like the super, we were actually talking about that with another athlete, just you need to work on the super detailed nuance of a movement until you have the big picture themes right. kind of developed and cultivated. So if you think about it like movement as like squat, hinge, upper pull, upper push, that's probably good enough to get to a certain level yep. of capacity. But then that squat starts to blow out to be like, all right, well, if you're gonna go to a sanctional competition, you might have to, like what we've seen this year, we've seen sandbag squats, we've seen barbell overhead squats, dumbbell overhead squats, uh, Some kettlebell scampy. overhead squats. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I wish I had the bubble gum <laughs> voice on command. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, yeah. But the point of that is, is that as you start the sport, or you're, you're trying to get better. It's really the pattern that needs to develop first, yeah. and then you can kind of go into the nuances or the more specific movements that uh, you may use. Yeah. So we've seen a little bit of, I guess, energy mismanagement potentially. If you look at just Noah's, you know, posture, overall demeanor, he's tired and he wasn't feeling great. I'm not gonna give him an excuse because no one felt great, but um, potentially went out too hot in that first three minutes because Trav's already is set into the hang power cleans and we're in the six minute window. I don't see the time right there, but I'm guessing we're like three minutes into yeah. this or something like that. A little bit and, farther than that. Yeah, or a little farther and he's like, uh, you know, substantially ahead. I thought it was interesting too that Trav Switch like right now he's doing that kind of bounce technique that both him and Noah are doing on the screen right now But he'll also go into the hinge pattern where he just like hinges over and pulls it up We'll so, see it in the next I think Chris films him exclusively in the next one or closer to him So you can yeah. see the difference that he does yeah in the nine minute AMRAP, yeah, in the nine minute AMRAP. He, he does both techniques yeah. and I think that's just something that you know having variability in motion like obviously you got to be fast if you want to be a good competitor in the sport, but having different levels of speed so you can transfer from one to the other as you get tired, I think is a good skill yeah, to have. It's just like standing somewhere, standing <laughs> at church when they're singing so many you songs. Rock back and, and, and forth, gotta, yeah. Okay, now Stand I'm going to yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, that's what he's doing though, right? Is like he it, he does does the longer hang to get his heart rate to come down or whatever he, that perception is of yeah. like trying to cool down and then he goes fast again. Yeah. It's pretty crazy that he can do that while he's still working though. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wonder if if Noah was ahead, if the dynamics would have changed, or if like if he's truly at max effort. He seemed like he ran a really good race in, in this overall structure, but um, things change. I actually, I literally just read something. I forgot where I read it, um, but that like there's an instantaneous change in physiology if you're racing and you are in the lead and lose the lead. Like mm. it's almost instantaneous in your body. I don't know how they would have even studied that. Um, oh, that's uh, Seuss, Dr. Seuss's work. Dr. Yeah. Seuss, one fish, two, two fish, fish, red fish, fish blue yeah. fish. Oh, mm -hmm. That is where I read it. That's my evening reading material. Fox on socks is the best one. <laughs> you guys gotta read that. It's like fox on socks on knocks on box, fox on knocks on fox on socks. You never read that one? Man, you were so good with those words. <laughs> Do that with the bloopers in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I screwed up again today. It was bad. Hopefully yeah. they get to see it. I'll put them at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, I've read that book 500 times to Kendrick. Back yeah. to the thing. Right. Six, <laughs> six minutes is up. All right, so game okay, prep. Back to Fox. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, do it again. <laughs> yeah. All right, so. Uh, Another three minute rest and then yeah. one more. It's a nine minute and wrap. Then same format of the workout. Uh, we were talking about games prep at the last week. I think. Uh, you know, obviously the structure of the games this year is different than any of us know. We don't yep. really know what's coming out, what the format's gonna be. We know there's gonna be some form of eliminations. Um, the purpose of these weekends is a, a lot of people at the highest level of the sport, they train by themselves. And so you have that data to say like, okay, my numbers are here, I can do this, I can do this, I needed to get better at this, so I had some structured progressions to get better at this. But it's just so much different than being in an environment where you're racing against somebody else, where you get new standards, where you potentially are losing versus when you're training by yourself, there yep. is no losing. There's no one else next to you to give you any sort of psychological feedback or the emotional volatility of going up and down. 
most people are spending most of their training priority time on the, you know, the 75% of the stuff inside the gym that needs to get worked on that we know is coming out in a CrossFit style setting. But when you're prepping for the games, you gotta be good at bike handling. You gotta be good at making sure that you can run really hard for a short period of time on a field, that you can run really well doing 400s in the middle of Metcon, that you can run multiple miles back to back, that you can do that and then come in in the evening and do strength work. And you can't train like that year round. So yeah. you take these little blocks of time and say, all right, we're gonna give you some exposure to you know, this level of training intensity, get your body prepared for it, practice your fueling, get you as prepped as possible for all of the volume and patterns that you're gonna experience, and then you kind of go back into a nor normal training cycle. And that's kind of been the model and the purpose of this camp, kind of build a community of people that uh, is going to the games and has a little bit more of like, prep and awareness of what potentially could come up. So we have a good time doing it, or at least I had a good time. I didn't get to yeah, train that much. Yeah, speak for yourself, just... asshole. <laughs> <laughs> the early morning sucked. Yeah. I'm gonna make a better schedule next time. We're, We're gonna, gonna do another do... one in July. But yeah. that's part of it. Right? Yeah, the it is, yeah. Wake up. yeah. Sometimes, I mean, that one year we had to get up at like- Oh, they, super early, Yeah, right? they had to get up at like three o'clock in the morning to get on a flight to go to Aromas and yeah, I mean, there's just all, there, we have absolutely no idea, but I do think that adds to the stress of what they're gonna experience. It's not just the physical stuff, so try to simulate it as best as you can. Yeah, and it's good for them to, uh, you know, I know that some of my athletes that were doing it were talking about the stress of the unknowns of some of the things they haven't practiced yet, yeah. like the, sw the long swimming or the long paddleboarding and all that. Some of that may come out in the games that's something that you haven't tested yet, and you gotta, it, learning how to deal with it here is a, a lot better than learning how to deal with it at the games. Yeah. Yeah, and it'll maybe potentially a little safer because, yeah. you know, it's just less people. Right. You know, this year it could be way more people in the water. How much time until they start? They actually just started. Just started. Trav just, Dang. Uh, we should have cut really it off. Cool. No, I had something uh. really awesome to say. <laughs> <laughs> so again, they're going back with the, the longer hang instead of popping it out of their hips. Yeah. You can see like Colson in the background's bouncing it off of her thighs still. I think that's obviously a little bit faster, more yeah. efficient for her. But Travis and Noah both kind of yeah. like this. And, and I do the same thing. I, I would hang down to my knees. I feel like it's a little less energy for me. Yeah, the, uh, that hinge pattern seems a little bit slower, but it also seems to be, uh, you gotta hold, to have that bounce technique, I feel like it's a lot of just like postural tension yeah. and like the, the jolting. So I think it's just something people gotta practice and decide if it's worth it in this format. You know, just comparing Travis to Colson, I don't know if Colson did it unbroken, but Trav took one break and you know he's one or two burpees behind right. in a nine minute workout, probably not that big of a deal. No. Um, so it's, you're not gonna save that much time, but if the workout was shorter, if it was just scored as the three minute MRAP, then those types of things might have actually For been sure. separators. Yeah, I think really what it comes down to, and again, why I said in the first one, I do like EMOMs is for, so, so the person can find out what's the most efficient way for them yeah. and be like, this one feels the best and I'm still pretty fast at it. Yeah. Because those are the two things you gotta put together, right? Yeah, so technique wise, I think Noah's, yeah, Noah's still stepping off all his burpees. Trav kind of has that hop and jump off no matter what. I don't know what the purpose of it, why they default to that strategy is, but they've done enough of these that they just pick what works for them. And in the nine minute window right now, they're at the same spot. So thrusters, I think typically, Noah's thruster cadence is slightly faster than Trav's. You can see Travis right now compared to Colson in the back, just like the overall cycle speed is just faster, faster up, faster down. I know she's been dealing with some knee issues yeah. as well. She's usually pretty fast at barbell cycling, but when you see it like that, that There's illustrates, a big yeah, big difference there. And then if you saw an athlete, like she's an individual sanctional level athlete, if you saw just like, you know, a general class member, the cycle speed would be like even less rhythmic and yeah. slow. And you just lose time even while you're working. It's not right. just that you're resting more, it's that these athletes are conditioned to move fast and rest less. Well, that's one of the things that Colson's been working on. And actually this next week, she's gonna take it a little easy and then we're gonna start a new block kind of leading into the, the rest of the summer where she's working on just like certain movements and the speed at which she does mm -hmm. them because she's very aerobic and she can, like she ends up 
getting into the muscle ups here, which was the second best score, but her movement speed is still so slow that she, I feel like there's a lot of time that can be gained. Yeah, and it cost her on the three, in yes. the, the three and the six, six minute window. Sure. Yeah. But then when it becomes just grinding and continuing to move, she excels. So it's interesting how many different ways there are to be successful at this sport and what the different levels of athletes all look like and how they try to accomplish the tasks. Yeah. The, so by this point, this was the second heat. The first heat, you could tell like, all right, this workout is real. This nine minute window, everyone said that the six minute window was pretty bad and the times and the scores, if, when we kind of go and look at the board and put it up there, you'll see like you have three extra minutes of time to work and you're yeah. barely getting farther into the workout. Right. Um, I know obviously what we're showing in the demo, these distribution of scores are pretty good, but for most people, they were going at the three really well and then going into the six minute, I know Luke had that extra three minutes and I think he got like five Five total he more reps in the six up. minute window. That was partially my fault. He said he was gonna go out hot without <laughs> a pacing, and I said, all right, you gotta get used to that pace anyway. You might as well try it. Yeah. But that might have set him up for failure in the workout. To so you can see Travis here changing his rhythm. He did two at the full hang, and then three yeah. bounces, and then a couple more at the full hang. That's just him being intuitive, right? Like I think he's just kind of yeah. filling his body and saying what's gonna work for me. And again, that's, that is a cool thing about the sport. It's finding your best path uh, to get the best time or as many reps as you can. Yeah, so let's see. So that's kind of like a normal hang one, normal hang one. I'm pretty sure in the last hang. like six or yeah. seven, he goes back to bounce and it's, it's pretty fast. But you're right, there's a lot more tension there. Yeah, he looks kind of smooth and rhythmic. Right. Oh, well, maybe he does them all this way. Maybe it was the six minute one. Ah. Dang it, I'm wrong. Yeah. You can see Noah there yeah. with the. the yeah, that, Noah's up. doing that, and that bounce speed is pretty fast. See those, some of those reps, those elbows don't look all the way up. But he mentioned it to me right before the workout, too. He said, make sure everyone's doing that. All right. <clears throat> So what's left? Burpees? Got burpees and he's going to do overhead squats. Another set of burpees and then he'll and then get also on some rings. Yeah. Oh, Mackenzie right there. She's doing the bounce yeah. technique too. I, I feel, I don't know if maybe the scale just for some of these movements, like the 70% scale from female to male is not accurate, um, but it seemed like the girls were just manhandling, yeah. especially the girls. We got a pretty heat. strong group of girls that yeah. were in this heat, though. Yeah. All of them are, are big cleaners, and yeah. they can they can deadlift a lot. They can hang a lot. Yeah, um, when we did the clean and jerk, I think Brooke attempted 250 yeah. on her last, so she's strong. It's right, hell. and the way that they all looked on the heavy DT, I mean, they did 155, which is the normal male weight, yeah. and they all, I mean, they were crushing yeah. it. So. That's really impressive to watch. So now it's 20 overhead squats. Yeah, so Trav's pretty extended a lead pretty good here. Um, they were equal at the start of, was it the hang power cleans? Um, I think he had already pulled ahead just a little bit. Okay, yeah, so it was a little bit ahead, and then, I don't know. He His looked, burpee he almost, box jumps cadence was a little bit faster. Yeah, he almost looked like he got a second wind here, too, because he was looking kind of like posture was breaking down and he was taking rest periods, but then he got in here and he, he was looking at the clock. He knew where he was, and he looks pretty solid here. He did these 20 overhead squats on Broken. I'm almost go, positive Trav. I yeah. say that, and then Come on now. he did. He did, right? Yeah. yeah, he did. He did those 20 overhead squats on broken, then burpee box jump overs, and onto the rings. So somehow he got a second win in this yeah. workout. Don't expect to feel that good at the end of no. this in the nine no. minute window for most people. But I think for him, impressive. he probably paced it well. You can see. So Noah beat him on the the first three minute AMRAP. Yeah, and then Travis kind of picked it up a little bit in the six minute, and then he really. I mean, he. For how much they, they did this week, he's putting the hammer down right here. I know it seems like he's yeah. moving slow on the very boxes. This is a, a really tough workout. There's not going to be that many people that make it to the rings. Yeah. Yeah, we had to coordinate the heats because we only got six rings on this side, and then we only had like three people get to the rings. So I yeah. think for most people, I mean, you're probably going to have to be relatively close to an individual games athlete, or you're just exceptionally good at these, you know, right. this style of workout. Um, to be able to get back into the rings into the nine minute window. Yep, yep, yep. There's ironic that I mean, some of them were kind of close in the six minute window, but then even with an extra three minutes, up. it's just like, yeah. you know, you can't make it all the way. Yep. Yeah, so fatigue resistance, I feel like that's like one of the biggest skills of an elite athlete is that they can just like 
go really hard and be resistant to whatever fatigue comes up, whether it's heat or heart rate, they can just like continually get themselves back working. So Trav's jumping up on the rings here. I think he had a minute. You guys probably have, you guys have a yeah. clock, so you know, but yeah. was it about he a minute? He had around a minute. Yeah. I think he does a set of six here to start, five or six, which is yeah. impressive after all that work. I mean, again, they've done a lot this yeah. week, a lot of muscle ups earlier in the week with bar muscle ups. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, this is, Solid. Yeah, it's really yeah. impressive. Yeah, this has been one of Trav's big training priorities is just doing gymnastics, specifically the pressing portion, getting out of a muscle up on the rings or getting out of a bar muscle up and doing that under fatigue. And this is um, after doing probably close to 100 burpee box jumps in this workout. And yesterday they did an enormous amount of kipping handstand push ups on yep. parallettes, par strict parallette handstand push ups, strict handstand push ups. Just a, just a lot of work has been put in this week. Um, so Noah got to the rings. I think he just did three, and then that's time. All right, so those uh, are some pretty impressive demos to go <laughs> Good after. Luck, Good everyone. luck, <laughs> Yeah, you get to see how. Brooks, yeah. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> yeah, so that's probably what you're going to feel like if you do the workout correctly, uh, but maybe not that deep into the workout. Hey, Max, I got a question for you, brother. Yeah, man. You want to go back out there and review these mother frickin' scores? I'm going to give them some scores. Oh, yeah. All right, so you saw Travis and Noah just to recap their scores. Travis got 57 reps in the first, and Noah got 67 reps in the first. Then Travis got 104 reps in the second, six minute AMRAP, and Noah got 95. And then Travis got 130 to finish the nine minute AMRAP, so he was 10 muscle ups shy of finishing, and Noah got 124 reps. The way that we aggregated total points over here was as if this were a qualifier style workout and you were seeing a qualifier leaderboard. So instead of an in-person competition where you get extra points for winning or being near the top and then it gets progressively farther away if you go down the leaderboard, you just got one point for a win, two points for a second. So you see Travis won the overall for our training group with four total points. Noah took second with five. Jeremiah, and then here are the rest of the male scores. See distributions of scores anywhere from 42 reps up to 67 on the first, anywhere from 104 reps down to 54 reps on the six minute AMRAP and 130 reps down to 66 reps. So there's a pretty wide distribution of scores. You have that to look at to try to make a game plan for yourself. On the female side, Brooke Haas actually won all the workouts, so 72 reps, 111 reps, 124 reps, and then uh, you'll see distribution of scores down to 44 reps in the th three minute AMRAP, in the six minute AMRAP from that 111, all the way down to a 70 total reps, and then in the nine minute AMRAP, 124 reps to 97 reps. So again, you see some pretty wide distribution of scores. That should give you some targets to shoot after and to help you make a game plan for your execution of the workout. All right, so you have your training priorities when you're attacking this workout, you need to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Travis Mayer, ladies yeah. <laughs> so you have your focus priorities for the workout. You've seen a demo and you have some scores to go after, some final preparation points. Yeah, I think it's really just two things. One, come up with your game plan beforehand, how you want to attack each of the three AMRAPs. Obviously, uh, if you go out too hot, you red line, you can suffer on the six and the nine. So come up with a plan. You've already seen people that started to slow down the yeah. six and the nine minute AMRAP. And then this is a long workout, it's 24 minutes. Obviously, you got breaks in between, but make sure you have a very extensive warm up and be intense, especially if you're going to go out hot in that three minute workout. Yeah, and in your warm up, I think prioritize the things that are most important. I remember seeing yes. on site people were doing tons of muscle ups and most people aren't even getting to <laughs> yeah, the muscle exactly. up. So make sure that, you know, you know you're going to hang power snatch in every one of the rounds, so maybe that's the priority movement to focus yeah. on. Just have a kind of a mindful approach to what you're getting ready for. Um, final things uh, as always, the way that we're able to put this on is by having coaching and having an online training group called The Design. We're actually changing some of the training groups in there. So we have our sanctional path, our open path, a scaled path, which is new, that's a little bit easier to tolerate, a little bit less volume, and a strength and conditioning path, which is designed to be well-rounded strength and cyclical conditioning. So if you want to check either of those two things out, go to trainingthinktank.com and check them out. Give us your freaking money! Yeah! It's a wrap, you know what I'm saying? Your boy Project Pata in this thing, man. Hey, look, man, thank y'all for watching Train Think Tank YouTube channel. Y'all hit that motherfucking subscribe button, you know what I'm saying? So y'all go ahead, man. Thank y'all for watching the channel, you know what I'm saying? 
Hit that motherfucking subscribe button. Let it be known what it be known what it be known. You know what I'm saying? Hot talk.